Hey everyone, Patrick Donahoe here. Today we're going to be doing a case study associated with a, a client of ours. And my intention is basically to use this diagram to introduce uh, the actual case itself, talk to you about where this person was and what they're gonna wind up with after they work with us. And then the second part of, uh, of this whole case study is me basically going through all of the different math and the, the ins and outs of the actual, uh, actual plan. Uh, but this first part is just going to be me generally going through a summary of this client situation and what we did for them. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and start with what this individual came to us with. Uh, so first off, I'm actually going to be explaining this in terms of an income statement uh, or a cash flow statement and a, and a balance sheet. So let me just review that quickly. Uh, so first, income is basically money that comes into your personal economy. Uh, expenses is money that goes out of your personal economy to somebody else. The net of that is going to be your cash flow. So what we're going to do is we're going to use green to represent uh, the positive as far as cash flow is concerned. And we're going to use, as you can guess, red to represent the negative. So if you are positive or negative, on a monthly or an annual basis. Okay, so positive is again, more income and expenses. Negative is more expenses than income. Pretty self-explanatory. Looking at the balance sheet, balance sheet is a function of assets and liabilities. So assets is something that's a value you can sell, liquidate, et cetera, and get money in exchange for it. Liabilities are basic, is basically money that you owe to somebody else. So looking at uh, the, the, the function of assets and liabilities, you're going to have a positive or negative net worth or a positive or negative equity. So I'm just going to use equity. So positive and then negative. Excellent. Okay, so let's actually talk about this specific client. So first off, this individual has no income other than his earned income. So right now, uh, when he came to us, his income was about $60,000 per year. So. $60,000. Now, this individual uh, is a family man. He uh, has four children, and, uh, and, so, and he is on a W-2 salaried wage. Uh, but still, it's, it's really, uh, it was really a good sign when, because of his financial situation, uh, he did have a positive cash flow at the end of each month and at the end of the year. So I'm going to represent that by a yearly figure. Uh, he was saving about $5,000 per year, and that is a positive number. Okay, so despite his expenses, he still was able to have $5,000 of savings per year. Uh, looking at his expenses, I'm gonna use just a couple uh, of the expenses. Of course, we're not gonna get into you know what he pays for groceries and insurance and things like that, uh, but as far as the expenses are concerned, I'm gonna talk about more of his debt expenses. So he did have quite a bit of credit card debt and also um, car loan debt relative to his situation, and he was subsequently paying $700 uh, per month on that. So about $8,400 per year in debt payments. Okay. All right, let's talk about assets and liabilities. So this individual, he was saving money, but the majority of this money was going to a qualified plan. And his employer was uh, matching his qualified plan, so to him it made, it made sense. So right now in his qualified plan, he has about uh, $20,000 in, uh, in balance. Uh, he also has $2,000 in liquid savings. And to top it all off, which is one of the main reasons he came to us, uh, is because he just received an inheritance of $50,000 cash. So he currently has $50,000 He has an inheritance that is liquid. So now let's look at his, uh, his liabilities. So his liabilities, he basically has uh, some credit card debt and he also has car loan debt. So car loan debt is right at about $10,000 and he's paying about 5% interest on that money. Uh, credit card debt is at uh, $10,000 as well and he's currently paying an average interest rate of about 15%. So looking at his, uh, his equity position, he is in a, still in a positive equity position given, given these right here. And so his equity is at about $52,000. $52, and we're going to uh, represent that with a positive number. Okay. Uh, so looking at basically his financial situation, some of the first things that popped out to me was, uh, was obviously his positive savings rate. He wants to save. Uh, it was also his inheritance, and uh, so those are the, kind of the positive things. The negative things were the majority of his cash flow was going to a non-liquid account, which was his 401k. Having four children, um, liquidity is very, very, very important, 
And uh, what showed me that he didn't necessarily have a lot of liquidity was the fact that he was in $10,000 of credit card debt. So instead of using liquid savings to make purchases, he was paying 15% to access uh, somebody else's savings, essentially. Okay, so those are the, those are the things that, uh, that stood out for me. Okay, so what did we, uh, what did we do? So the game plan is, uh, um, is very easy in this scenario. We do have really complex cases. I just wanted to show this because it is, uh, it is very simple. So what we did is we first took this, uh, this $50,000 um, and uh, started to talk to him about what, uh, what some of the goals were with that. Uh, he did have some interest in real estate. Uh, his parents owned rental real estate and he felt like that would be a, a good place for it. But he was also concerned with his debt and also his savings rate. He realized that this wasn't enough. He realized that with four kids and the expenses that they were going to uh, you know, have him incur, he was going to require a lot of credit down the road to be able to afford that. But he also wanted to prepare for his latter years. He wanted a lot of long-term savings. So with those objectives in mind, this is pretty much uh, what we did. And then I'll show you the results of what we did after. So we essentially used that liquidity and we were able to uh, pay off some of his debt uh, we were also able to fund a, a policy and we subsequently used the cash value to pay off the remaining amount of debt. And then what we did is we took the cash flow associated with that debt and that cash flow is basically what paid back the policy loan. We also took about $25,000 and he chose to go with this real estate company and subsequently uh, purchased a rental property using a lot of his parents' techniques. Again, this is not necessarily a, a, a good recommendation for somebody in this situation, but given his family, uh, it, it definitely was a plus and I felt, uh, I felt good about him making that decision. Okay, so uh, basically he used half of the inheritance to uh, purchase a, uh, a rental property. And we subsequently taught him about cash flow and taking the cash flow associated with this property and not squandering that, but building a good reserve and using the velocity of money idea and rolling that cash flow into future assets. So here's what his financial situation looked like uh, basically a year down the road. So first off, his income um, stayed the same from a W-2 standpoint. So his income was at $60,000, okay? But as far as the cash flow from his rental property, now he has a passive income that is at about $4,400 per year. So he was able to take his, um, his half of that inheritance and purchase a rental property, which will enhance the amount of uh, capital he's going to have for future transactions, okay? So uh, looking at basically that, that's, that's his income. Uh, his expenses, we wiped out all of his debt, so he no longer had any debt associated with, uh, with credit cards or car loans. So what that did is from a cash flow standpoint is that increased his overall savings uh, to just about $17,000, just over $17,000 per year. So that is a massive increase from uh, $500. So looking at the money that was being transferred to credit card company, uh, to car loan companies, now was able to be transferred into uh, capital and money giving him a positive cash flow. He's also able to increase his income because of the rental property. Now let's look at his, uh, his asset base. So his assets, he built, uh, first off his, you know, he was, uh, we decided uh, it'd be a good idea to him to contribute up to his employer match. So he, you know, basically was able to continue to put that money in. So the 401k at the end of one year would have about $22,000 if it didn't earn um, any interest. Now, another thing that we did is we did set up a policy. Uh, that policy at the end of the, uh, end of the year, just after a year, was going to have about uh, $20,000 of, of cash value. Uh, it's a policy that we build that has a really huge upfront uh, cash value, and that money is able to uh, be used for purchases and so forth, okay? Uh, he also, um, we, we set up this policy so that he still would have a lot of excess cash flow. So the excess cash flow would give him um, about $8,600 or, uh, or so, okay? And then the final thing with the equity of his property, he was going to build a $25,000 uh, equity position given uh, the purchase and the net of the value of the home minus the mortgage that he took on. 
So he had a, a pretty significant increase uh, of assets. Okay, but also, um, which, is, which is more significant, is he did, uh, he did wipe out all of his liabilities. So looking at uh, the credit card debt, the car loan debt, and so forth, all of that, uh, all of that is gone. And his equity position went to $75,600. So and both of these are positive numbers. So looking at this uh, transformational type of plan, what's great is that not only do we wipe out liabilities, but we saw the biggest, one of the biggest concerns that he had was having to go back into debt with a credit card company or a car loan company. Now he's able to use the loan provision of his insurance company, of the policy that he set up to finance all of those future transactions. Uh, it also is going to be his reserve associated with anything that his kids are going to need in the future, which he did not have previously. So looking at the situation, like I said, this is just the first part summarizing everything. Now I'm gonna go into a lot of the details and show you how I came up with these numbers. So in the second part of this case study, what I'm going to do is just break down the flow of money and talk about the different steps that we took to accomplish the, uh, the, the one year goal that we had uh, that we had set out. So first what I'm going to do is as step one, I'm just going to use this uh, this 50,000, this $50,000. So this is uh, this is an inheritance. And basically, the, the question became, what's the most effective use of, of this money? And so uh, the first part of this 50,000 was uh, was getting rid of uh, was getting rid of the debt. So there's two things associated with this. I think that it's become somewhat um, cliche, which is you know using your home equity line of credit like a um, you know like an ATM. I mean, a lot of people had had pointed to that as one of the root causes of the Great Recession and going into uh, a lot of debt uh, pre 2008. Um, and so the idea behind that is not necessarily where individuals uh, were doing debt consolidation because debt consolidation is in a sense um, sensible and, and rational because it's basically exchanging tax deductible interest um, for you know high, high interest, whether it's credit cards or so forth. The issue at hand.